Good evening. I want to welcome everybody to the Strand Bookstore. My name is Nancy Bass Wyden. I'm the owner of the Strand. For a little bit of history, uh, the store was founded in 1927 for my grandfather, Benjamin Bass, and then um, my dad uh, passed on to my dad, and then now on, on to me. Come on in. <laughs> um, the whole area was a literary epicenter. Uh, the um, or along Fourth Avenue was called Book Row, and there were 48 uh, used bookstores. And we moved a block away, and today we're the only um, survivor from that era. So we're so thrilled to have you here. We have about 400 events, cutting edge events a year. So I hope you'll join us uh, for more author and um, and fun discussions like this. Uh, I'm uh, excited to, he to be here tonight to welcome Ashley Longshore and Christian um, Shiriano to the Strand Rare Book Room. Ashley is uh, currently uh, featured at Bergdorf Goodman and uh, collaborated with Rolex, Gucci, uh, Diane von Furstenberg, Judith Lieber, and many others. Uh, she's garnered comparisons to Andy Warhol for her pop art paintings and infectiously outrageous take on culture. Ha Ashley and her mixed media paintings have been featured in the New York Times, Town and Country, Page Six, and many others. Uh, she's here tonight to cel celebrate I Do Not Cook, I Do Not Clean, I Do Not Fly Commercial, her appropriately exuberant and uncompromising new book, Delving into her life history and summing up her uncompromising outlook is its bold and a beautiful gift to her massive art culture following. I'm so thrilled to have Christian here with her to discuss the book. Uh, Christian has been the world famous designer since becoming the youngest winner of Project Runway and launching his first collection in 2008. Since then, he's been featured in every season at the New York Fashion Week and presented around the world, and he's become a mentor to new contestants on the show. In 2013, he was inducted as a member of the Council of Fashion Designers of America, and in 2016, he was named the Designer of the Year at the American Image Awards. I couldn't be more thrilled to have this most dynamic of dynamic duels here with us. So please join me in welcoming Christian and Ashley to the stage. I don't know. What side do you want to be on? Whatever. Do you want to be on top be on. or do you want to be above? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what do you what? want to be? Strand. This is crazy. <laughs> Do you love it? I yes, I feel. Can you hear us? Oh yeah. Oh, there's so much literature. <laughs> First is this loud enough? Yeah. I'm projecting. I was in the theater briefly. You look divine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is Tomo. This is not Christian Siriano, you guys. This is Tomo. Exactly. And, and for the first time in my life, I've decided to be a minimalist. <laughs> no, but really, people always say, um, oh my god, Ashley, how the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I'm sitting on a fucking rainbow. And they're like, ah, ha, 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 like you just did. And then I go, do you know how you get a rainbow? And they go, how? And I'm like, a big fucking thunderstorm. So... Here that we are. That is so true. That is you. Well, it's funny that like I'm sitting here right now and I have a Rizzoli coffee table book, but like mm -hmm. it wasn't so long ago when I was crying myself. Uh, I was crying so loud that one of the security guys at the Bowery Hotel like came up and was like, ma'am, are you okay in there? Because this shit is hard, you know? It's hard. So there are thunderstorms and there are rainbows, but this is like such an honor to be here with you tonight and to be at this place and to be in this moment. So thank you guys so much for coming. We're here for you. Ask me anything, anything at all. Okay, ready? Okay, I have a list, but this is my very You're so pro professional. Professional. Christian. I filmed all day and I came here, so. Thank you. Up. Which, P.S., um, by the way, <laughs> um, I'm on Project Runway this season with Chris. You are. Yes. We have Ashley as a guest. She's amazing. It's a great challenge. I can't spill what it is. No, we can't spill. We're but not. It's no. great. There's no tea. Um, 
and and yeah. Okay, well, first question is a great thing because we're here, we're at the Strand, we're at a bookstore. What's the last book you read? Um, <clears throat> do you want, I mean, I need to be honest, right? Yeah, with like an honest answer. It was the Kama Sutra, and page 180 is unbelievable. Take an Advil if you want to do it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Take two. Yeah, it takes two to make a thing go right. Mm. <laughs> okay, I have a lot of questions here, and I'm going to jump around because it's a mix. Because Ashley requested um, d- dirty questions, and I said, well, let's be professional for the first, like, ten, and then we can get into something else. Okay. Um, so we're going to be... Just don't make me cry. I'm a crier, y'all. I'm, sen- I'm sensitive. <laughs> No, you're not. No, Shut people up. need to talk about being sensitive. Well, here, these days, this people is a, are assholes. True. They are. But it's okay. Um, I'm going to start. <laughs> let's jump off with something nice, though. Okay. I think this is nice because of what you're wearing and your jewelry and okay. what you put into your work. How do you feel like fashion inspires your work? Well, I mean, look, I, I'm an American woman. I cannot deny the fact that I'm that I'm a consumer. Um, and when I didn't have two nickels to rub together, being a self-taught artist, I was like, shit. I remember going on like NeimanMarcus.com and going on these old websites thinking like, how the fuck does somebody pay $1,200 for a pair of pants? That's crazy. How do you do that? And, um, and then I realized how you do it. You just got to work really, really fucking hard. Um, I love fashion because it's, it's self-expression. You create your own world. I mean, Christian Siriano world is totally different than Tomo world, Mm -hmm. but I want to be in both worlds. And when we put this on, it's like, this is me. This is the character that I am. This is how I feel on the inside. I feel like me as like a painter, you know, I'm taking my thoughts and creating something tangible. Um, I'm building like this fortress of energy and the world that I want to be in. And it's humorous. It's funny. There's iconic, beautiful women. There's profanity. There's disco balls and chandeliers there's empty champagne bottles there's full frontal nudity <laughs> trip. there's nudity um <laughs> no what i love about creative people is that my god the world needs you the world needs you so badly and i just crave that you know i sell a painting i buy a painting i i love designers i love fashion i love jewelry i love all that stuff so great answer thanks well then what was your most favorite collaboration in fashion ever with someone who's sitting next to you? Oh, uh, well, that was quite a moment for this self-taught artist from Montgomery, Alabama to be in the center of your fall fashion show, to be painting all of those beautiful women who have inspired you and then to see clothes that, um, you know, were inspired by my artwork. I just think that that kind of symbiosis is really exciting and it's special and it's rare. And um, yeah, that, that was that was pretty fucking awesome. Him, Christian. It was good, right? Thank you. Yeah, it was so fun. And then I got to be backstage and he's like, everybody be quiet. Yeah. Hair and makeup people. He's like clapping his hands and I'm like, oh my God, I love watching somebody else yell. <laughs> You're really good at yelling. Yeah, I'm really bossy. Yeah. Um, it was great. Um, okay, well then, I, then I'm going to lead into, because you've done collaborations yes. and you love collaborating. But yeah, it's fun. Yeah, but what is a collaboration, not necessarily in fashion, in anything that you would die to do your dream collaboration? My God, I mean, I don't know that I would know my, my dream collaboration. Maybe I'd, you have to. Well, I mean, I mean, I would love to do, like, skins for private jets. I would love to do, um, you know, a design a whole fucking yacht, you know, uh, as long as they let me have it for, like, five years and they <laughs> get me a full staff and, like, the captain and everything. <laughs> and I could just, like, you know, wear caftans and rows of diamonds that hung down below my vagina. I haven't thought about this at all, by the way. <clears throat> okay. No, real fucking talk, and I fucking mean this. I just got my paperwork from the IRS that says I can officially give scholarships. I, look, I'm a self-taught artist from Montgomery, Alabama, and I know I keep saying that, but it just proves that there's so much potential if you're willing to put yourself out there and just say fuck it. And I feel like the coolest thing I can do is give scholarships to all kinds of people, big fucking six-figure heavy comma scholarships to people that not not that they don't have to necessarily make fucking straight A's because I sure as fuck didn't. Creative, un- yeah, fuck straight A's, <laughs> fuck straight A's. Get everywhere. Um, 
I, I feel like right now I'm, a, I'm not done yet. I was just going to say, like, <laughs> if you're like a doctor in the room, you might need the A's. But, oh. but just check in. Oh, yeah, that's different. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I feel, and I just recently had this awareness that, like, shit, you know, I've been very fortunate with my opportunities, and I've, I work harder now than I did 20 years ago. But I, I realize I'm building a pyramid, you know? Like, I'm collecting art. I'm, I'm collecting, you know, these crazy fashion pieces. I'm correct, collecting all of these things from artisans that are really describing the time that we live in right now. And my greatest legacy when I'm dead one day, which, my God, everybody loves a fucking dead artist, is, is to have a big foundation where p the public can see all this artwork and see, you know, paintings of mine and, and be inspired to know that, you know, shit, the arts are so important. They're so important, you know? And to give just outrageous amounts of money to people. I, I hope I can do that. I hope I can do that. So that's my dream. I would like a fee for on this stage because I need a scholarship. Mm -hmm. We'll talk. We'll have your people talk to my people. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> or just text me. So. <laughs> okay, well, then this is a good segue because I think a lot of your work is about empowerment, especially, specifically about women empowerment, and you paint these amazing, iconic women, but that was not always what your work was in the beginning, so what kind of, what made you feel like that was what you wanted to paint? I mean, I, f I feel like... Um, we're all changing every day and we're growing from our own experiences. So for me to be inspired by incredible women, especially right now, um, you know, with the way things are politically, et cetera, um, I, I just think it's more important than ever to learn about people who've overcome bullshit in their life. It isn't so much about glamour and money and all that stuff. It's like, how, how does somebody overcome their fear? How does somebody put their ass out there when all hell has broken? And loose. And those are the people I want to learn about. And I mean, uh, uh, fortunately, Diane von Furstenberg has been curating me and teaching me so much about some incredible women throughout history. And um, I, I just want to, I want to know more. It's like the older I get, the more I realize I don't know shit. I've got so much to learn. And I'm inspired by history now more than ever. So... And does that kind of go with the same with sometimes when you do your artist series where you're inspired by other artists but then paint them? Like what, what makes you want to oh, paint yeah, other that, artists? Yeah, that, I was, you know, like the way that I paint, I paint in these collections. And sometimes when I'm in between just like these like moments of, oh my God, I have to paint that. I like to make myself paint every day. I mean, I feel like a writer writes every day. A photographer takes pictures every day. A painter fucking paints every day. A cook cooks every day, you know? Um, so I, I love studying these artists and like decomposing their work and moving them around. And uh, that was a fun series. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, look, I'm, I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you. You know, being an artist and a creative person is a very selfish thing. And I know you know that. Mm -hmm. This is about amusing yourself. This is about me appeasing my own ideals and and what turns me on in society so you know if, if I have an idea and I want to deconstruct something and paint it then fuck them if they don't like it okay wow I think it I have an interesting question and I hope people think it's interesting how do you choose the size or the scale of every piece you do because some of your work is so big and I would so make them all big because why? But why? Because it just because we like science no. Because or what? Oh. you know what? And it because it feels humbling. I feel like like the bigger I can make something, um, I don't know. The more I I, it, I don't know. It's a very strange feeling. It's a humbling feeling. Maybe like when you walk into like a big, crazy, ginormous, beautiful church and you feel so small all of a sudden. I feel like sometimes when I paint these paintings and there's so much red and there's so much pink and then there's so much sparkle, which I know some people are like, oh my God. But for me, it makes me feel alive. I love it. And even at the beginning of my career when I would, I could only afford to go to Home Depot and buy scrap wood. And I got to be friends with the guys in there and I'm like, I know y'all got some lawn wood back there. You can put 50 cents on. And I would just paint. I would paint morning, noon, and night. I mean, in college, I skipped so many classes and I would sit in my dorm room and I would just, I would just fucking paint and then I would line all these things up and the color just, it made me feel okay, if, if that makes any sense. Like, I feel like there was a time in my life where I was like, shit, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want to go marry a rich man. And I sure as fuck don't want to ask my daddy for money. I want, I want that American dream. What am I going to do? And when I found painting, I found a joy that is just, um, it's inexplicable. It is, it's, 
it, it's like, I don't know. I knew if I never met the man of my dreams, I never made a million dollars. I found something in my life that would bring me great joy no matter what. You know, give me a box of crayons and a piece of cardboard, and I promise you I'll fucking entertain myself, and then I'll figure out how to fucking sell it. <laughs> sure that. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> not to be dramatic or anything. <laughs> well, that's a, okay. I like this then. So, because you're creating all the time and you're putting yourself out there in your work, are there pieces that you make every day that you hate or that you never love? No, no. And I think it was very important for me to know early in my career, for me to be judgmental of something that I'm being created, for me to, for me to go, oh God, Ashley, that sucks. That's the worst. Fuck that shit. I mean, like, it'd be like, girl, you know what? You did a great job. You tried as hard as you could. You did totally fuck that painting up. But you know what? <laughs> you could have sat around scratching your ass and instead you fucking tried. And I feel like that, inter that inner monster Monologue of any creative person or anybody out there that wants to be an entrepreneur. It, it really is about, I got this, I'm going to celebrate the smallest things ever. I mean, I remember back when my email was not dinging and I would be painting and I would send out some emails to like somebody's mom going, look at these new paintings that I did. Honey, when that email dinged, I was like, oh yes, oh yes, that could be it. That might be a buyer. That might be the one. It wasn't, you know, um, it was a power company. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it sucked. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's just, it's celebrating all those little moments. I mean, I wear a necklace up underneath all this tool that says, I would fuck me. And it's like every morning you do naked jumping jacks, you fridge kiss yourself in the mirror, you scream, I would fuck me, and you go out there and you fucking take life by the balls, goddammit. <laughs> Period. Okay. Or the Lady of Menorah, you choose. <laughs> okay, um, well, on my sheet was, what do you do when you wake up in the morning? So Next question. Now we know. <laughs> Scratch it. Okay, I have a... Okay, well, this is... <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sorry, Christian. <laughs> it's fine. I'm so hungry. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, because now that the that your email is dinging mm -hmm. and there and there are things happening all over the world, um, I've noticed because you've been traveling so much and you're and it's almost like now I think where you go inspires your work a little bit. Yeah. So, but you still paint in New Orleans. Oh my God. It's where you live. It's yes. where you are. Yes. Do you ever think about not being there, being somewhere else, in a different city? I'm more just curious because it's an interesting place. Does it inspire you? Yes. I feel like um, New Orleans feels like, like a mother to me. It's a city that celebrates the arts. It's, it's a, like, a, like an uncut diamond, you know? We don't have valet in New Orleans. There ain't no Michelin star restaurants in New Orleans, okay? But I, I love that. I, I don't like pretentiousness. I like that real artsy grind. And Unless my, you're on the jet. Huh? Well, I mean, sometimes, that, no, that is about business, Christian. Well, if okay, I got to get somewhere and get back, I'm trying to get to my fucking easel. I mean, that, I, I agree. That, I mean, God damn it. That's where I make my money, you know? I mean, shit. And, and look, commercial is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I've, I've been on five, five airplanes in the last seven days. I literally walked by the spirit counter and just hugged people. <laughs> I was like, look, I love you. I'm right here with you. Like, I, we've got to love each other right now. Um, but you know what I do to keep myself inspired? Because it it would be impossible to do that if I was always, at, you know, in the same place in New Orleans. I like to go places for a month at a time. I like to go on inspiration trips. Um, I did that in Holland. I've done that in Italy. I love Asheville, North Carolina. I love being in the mountains. I went out to Carmel and painted a whole collection for a month. Um, and, and I love that. And I'll, like, drive around the area during the day, and I'll paint all night. And um, I wake up early in the morning and paint. And um, it's like a soul douche. It just feels... <laughs> I love you. Hashtag hey, my love. Soul douche. Um, it, it, it's a soul douche, guys. And that's the name of my next book. <laughs> <laughs> soul douche by Ashley Longshore. Just think about the marketing opportunities, you guys. I don't know if we'll be here, but <laughs> <laughs> great plan. <laughs> I can't ask any of these questions. Um, not go oh, wait. Okay, I've got a good one. Um, this is just something that I think is interesting because now you're busy. You have a lot of work. You're painting every day. You said you do how many paintings a day? 
Oh my God, Christian. Um, you know, it, it differs. Uh, some days I'll try to do three or four. Other days maybe I can get through half of one big one. Yeah. Um, on a good day, it could be five or six. I'm just trying to keep up with the male artist stats of like Van Gogh and Picasso. They were doing eight or nine paintings a day, so I'm working up to that. Um, and it's funny because I'll talk to people and they're like, well, aren't you worried about being so prolific? And I'm like... No. First of all, it's my sanity. And second of all, bitch, I have an expiration date. I will be dead. And I think about my favorite artists who like died too young or who lived to be old and died. My God, I wish they'd painted three times as much shit as they did. I mean, you know, I want creative people to be as creative as they can be. So look, I'm going to paint as much as I fucking can, as much as I, often as I can. It, it wasn't a bad thing. I just wanted to know. Yeah. Well, th- there's <laughs> your like- you to answer, Christian. <laughs> okay. Um, well, wait. This is good. Okay. So, what are your like favorite artists? Your favorite artists that you love that you would hang on all your walls? Not in like. <sighs> a, it could be as obscure as you want. I mean, um, I love Peter Anton so much. I bought one of his giant, massive cake sculptures, and it makes me so happy because it really looks like real cake. And people <laughs> come to my house like with their kids, and the kids are like. <gasps> can I have a piece of that cake? And I'm like, it's not real. It's a sculpture. I love Peter. I love Ellie Smallwood. Um, I just collected art from this artist from Venezuela named Starsky Brines. I love uh, Spencer Herr. I love Anna Jensen, um, Wisby, uh, CB Hoyo. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm telling you. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Mm. It's, it's and it's all everything. It's painting, sculptures, your everything you love. A- everything I love. I just bought one of Tally Lennox's pieces mm-hmm. from a show she had here. I think it came down. Patre, when does that fucking painting come? Okay, great. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I, I literally will sell art and then buy art. It's my favorite thing in the whole world, and I like to keep that money in the art world. Mm-hmm. I feel like it keeps it pure. You know, it's just a shifting. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a category five of, like, Benjamin Franklin's, just fueling artists, <laughs> fueling energy, you know? I mean, that's the thing. I think artists, it, it, it ain't about having the biggest house on the block, and it ain't about having a Bugatti. It's about being able to afford to make your biggest idea come to fruition without going to somebody and going, going, can I have some money? You know, it's, a, it, it's using that own power that you've got to, to get out there. And, you know, what I think Andy Warhol said it, making art is art, making money is art. I mean, artists need money. They fucking do. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, now that your team is growing, it's getting bigger. 30 people now. 30 people. Amazing. It's incredible. How do you choose who works with you and who helps you paint? Um, well, I have that's a challenge. Yeah, it is. I have some amazing apprentices uh, that help me do that. I have people that help me bedazzle. I have a uh, manufacturing specialist. I've got my sales team. I've got five graphic designers. I've got photographers. I've got somebody helping us uh, style shots. I mean, it's, it's funny how it's gone from me painting in the back of a shotgun house, being like, my God, I hope I can pay my rent, to being like, Jesus Christ, I have a company with 30 people. This is like really so much bigger than just me I mean and when I when I told you I was building a pyramid like I really feel that way because I've got people on my team that have been with me for years and they're having babies and they're they're rolling up to work in fucking a brand new Mercedes and I'm like damn that's amazing this is magic you know and we're all working hard together and we all have a vision and it's just incredible and we're doing it in a city like New Orleans and you know we're going all over the world and you know now I'm sitting my ass up here at the Strand with the with the rainbow Tomo on and it's just like damn y'all life is pretty sweet you know (laughs) agree it is Mm -hmm. in between shit storms and thunderstorms and everything else okay I agree well, shit, shit st- you know, <laughs> shit ma- makes the best fertilizer. I say that every day. You don't know if it's going to rain money or be a shit storm, but shit makes amazing fertilizer. So you just got to be happy about it. Lessons today. That'll be in soul We're, lear- we're learning a lot. That'll be in soul douche. We'll make a whole chapter about shit storms. We're learning a lot today. <laughs> um, okay. All, a lot of my questions... Um, that your team sent me aren't really relevant. <laughs> just check in. Um, no, okay, wait, I have fun ones. I, I, Cause these are just like fun. We're gonna ask away. This is what I would like to know as a civilian watching and following you on Instagram. How and where do you find the videos on a daily basis? <laughs> 
That's a great question, guys. If you follow Ashley on Instagram, what the hell? Who finds those videos? Well, I'm very resourceful, and the internet is a wondrous place. I mean, you But also, deep. people get me, and they'll, like, send them to me. <laughs> they'll, they'll send me an email with, like, a link on there. They'll send me a message on Instagram with just a video. So I, I try to tag all those people when I can, or I'm like, please tell me who this human being is. Like, I love this human. I want to take a nap with them immediately. <laughs> um, but you know what? I mean, see, this is the thing about social media and people are like oh you know it sucks it's, it's a it's a vessel for negativity and all this stuff I really don't have a whole lot of that on my feed I don't make fun of people I don't I don't uh, poke fun at celebrities I want to be optimistic I want to have a good time you know and I don't think just reading an Instagram post is gonna like save your life or completely change your day but like it's all about those little moments of happiness it's all about joy for me I I'm a joy seeker I want to be happy and um, I try to put shit out out there that makes people feel good um so so there's that i like it great answer um then i kind of want to know well this is so because you are very uh, you're kind of of the moment and you are pretty open on social media and your paintings have words and phrases that not everyone is comfortable with because we talked about this at bergdorf that you mean some, like dildos yeah well dildos are fine um <laughs> But it's like, remember we said, has anyone really ever been so offended by your work or do you feel like didn't understand what you were trying to do? That's not my problem. Yeah. That, I mean, there's plenty of shit out there that I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. But you know what? I don't sit there and make a nasty comment about it. I don't sit there and dwell on it. I just like look the other way. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, if somebody doesn't like it, then they don't need to buy it. And they sure as hell don't need to look at it. And also on social media, they followed my fucking ass. And it's like, <laughs> I didn't ask you to follow me. I didn't send you a fucking engraved invitation. Please follow Ashley Longshore Art, you know, for the time of your life. No, asshole. You came on my page, you know, like, I don't care. If you don't like it or not, again, I mean, not to be one, two, three, back to me, <laughs> but ding. Um, but you know, making my art is for me. It's my. This is about me feeling good. You know, like I just did a painting that had six amazing dildos lined up, and it said fake news. <laughs> <laughs> That was for me, you guys. That was for me. Then I took the dildos and, and I had my graphic designers arrange them and we're making little suits, jumpsuits. So I want to paint in that. I don't know why, guys, but it feels right. I, I don't know why. I'll figure out why later. I just have to follow the urge. You know what I mean? My next question was, what, is there anything you won't paint or won't do? I'm guessing. Yes, of course. Yeah, Wait, it really? is, it's Well, like, do you have oh. people that are like, oh, you should do this with one of your gowns. And you're kind of like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I can hear you saying that right no, now. No, for sure. Um, but you're kind of well, like. from other people. Oh, I'm, like, not interested in any of well, that. Well, but, but, but you I already. But I mean, like, but you. Anything, like, you wouldn't push yourself into? Um, I mean, there's lots of stuff that I wouldn't paint. Okay. I mean, I haven't gotten, like, hell, like, fake news is my political painting. Yeah. <laughs> You know, because I, I, I think there's lots of other things to focus on that are very happy and, and uh, optimistic about life. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, of course, they're fucking boundaries. I mean, I've got my own. I've got my own inner thoughts. Nobody, yeah. Nobody's going to fuck with that. Mm -hmm. OK. All right. Well, wow. <laughs> um, OK, I have a f OK, ready? Fun question. I think just because it's silly. Um, is there a dream person that because a lot of your paintings are from photographs is there somebody that you would want to actually sit and paint like during the process like old school portrait painting oh sit in front god. of you and paint them who oh, would it be oh my god i mean i would love to do a nude of oprah <laughs> oprah oprah fucking winfrey gloria fucking steinem i mean but a nude why not why not? Just did checking. you ever see that portrait that Just Alice checking. Neal did of herself painting? And she had on this whole like bondage sadomasochistic outfit with nipple clamps and everything. But she was like 85 years old. Like her, you know, her nipples were hanging down. I missed that one. But it's I'll, I'll, I'll send you a picture. It's <laughs> marvelous. Um, I guess I don't have to be nude. Um, <laughs> no, I would just I would love to paint those incredible women. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And just spend time with them and make them tea. Yeah. Yeah. And I they think that would yeah. be really cool. Yeah, me too. I think that could be a new series. But I'm telling you this, though. All I know is, is that life is wondrous and grand. And I swear to God, I say this in the studio all the day, and my team will tell you, we don't know who's going to knock on that door today. Could be the police. Could be Beyonce. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, that happens to me every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but 
but you know, I mean, that that's the thing. I think that's why we have to stay hopeful and mind our own business, work as hard as we can, and just be excited. Um, I don't know. I'm 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 excited every day when I wake up. I really am. Good. I don't have any more questions. I mean, I had one question was like, who's your celebrity crush? Which I thought was kind of funny. It's you. No, but <laughs> <isn't really. laughs> now I'd like to demonstrate with this microphone what I'd like to do to Christian. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding, Kyle. Really Just kidding, Kyle. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm so grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for coming out here tonight and listening to me carrying on about all this wildness and and a, a life that seems crazy because again i mean i was just like this little fucking nerd in montgomery alabama that thought shit i'm gonna have to go find some asshole to marry and drive around a car full of fucking kids for the rest of my life (laughs) (laughs) but then i realized i don't have to be my mother (laughs) thank you guys yeah um okay we're gonna take questions from the audience and clearly, there is nothing you can ask. Um, so have fun. Who would like to ask a question? Mitch, no. Oh. Okay, so this is a question for Ashley and the heiress. <gasps> heiress. Okay. Yes. So, like, on the count of three, I want y'all to tell me what you think y'all's theme song together is. So, like, one, two, three. My neck, my back. <laughs> <laughs> she said Planet Rock. Yeah. Either one of those two. If you ever want to get the party started, you just put on either one of those two. <laughs> A hundred percent. That's a good question. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Oh, I, yeah, I can stand up. Hi. I was wondering, before you had a sales team, did you do anything to, like, market yourself? Goddamn like, right I did. And how Fuck, did I did all of it. Are you kidding me? I had to be as creative with my marketing as I was with making my artwork. Because I knew that. Because when I first started going to galleries, which, you know, fuck giving 50% up, by the way, um, they said, bitch, you're not marketable. And I was like, the fuck I'm not. You know, I've got to prove myself. And you know what? I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I've been turned down more than a bed in a cheap motel. And, I, and I'm and i thankful for every goddamn no that somebody ever said to me. Because you know what? That's when you fucking get smart. And that's what I was trying to tell you about shit makes the best fertilizer. It does. Because when you think you're having a shit storm, honey, that's when you get smart. That's when the crops start to really fucking grow. So, hell yeah, I sold all that. I had to. I had to pay my fucking rent, you know? Hello. Uh, I always send you funny videos. <laughs> Hi! What'd she say? She sends you fun videos. Oh, yay! <laughs> I want to know what was the event or what sale happened that you kind of felt that you made it? Like, what event? Oh, like your first big sale? The first time I ever got money for a, a painting. Okay. Um, your first big sale? No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. I have celebrated $35 sales in my career the same way I have celebrated $35,000 sales. This is what I'm talking about. You got to celebrate every goddamn moment, every little thing that happens. Um, so I've got to tell you, when I was in college and I started painting and, and I sold, it, it, was, it was $850. It was two paintings and they were, I did this uh, masturbating couple series. <laughs> It was college, you guys, okay? <clears throat> they were good. They were really good. Anyway, um, this lady had a gallery in Missoula, Montana, where I went to college. And um, I literally, I, I took in all my stuff. I showed, she was like, I'm going to have a show for you. Well, the only two paintings that sold were the paintings that she bought. And I, and I got, it was $850, which means I only got 425 and bitch, I was rich. <laughs> We went out, I bought shots for everybody, and I realized how fast you can spend $425. <laughs> yeah, I woke up naked, broke as hell, but that's all right. Um, it was fun, and I'd do it all over again. You do. <laughs> that was last Tuesday. I know. <laughs> yeah. See, I did get to ask a question. Ask it, ask it. All right. Um, So I heard you talk about the women that you painted at Diane von Furstenberg, and then I got to see the women that you painted for Christian, and I was wondering if there was anyone that stood out from the muses that you've been painting um, for all these fashion icons in New York City as someone that you loved learning about more or loved painting about more. I mean, you know, I didn't know anything about Greta Thunberg uh, four months ago. 
wow, the future is bright. I mean, that much enthusiasm and smart and brilliant. And I mean, uh, yeah, Diane gave me her name and I was like, who in the hell is this? <laughs> God, you know, who is this 16 year, you know, and then I look her up and I'm like, wow, wow, I've got to do more. I've got to be smart. And, and that's the thing. I mean, it's all about inspiration and, um, you know, learning about somebody that young, forgive me, it's hard to turn in my tomo, um, <laughs> learning about somebody that, that, that's that young and that actualized. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's so inspiring what we can do as human beings individually if we just make our minds up to do it and we believe in ourselves. It's pretty awesome. I mean, I'd love to chew out the whole UN. I don't know what I would say, but I thought Greta did a really good job. <laughs> okay, one last question. Um, first of all, you bring so much joy to people through your talent and creativity and just being on a unapologetically yourself. So thank, thank you, you for that. Thank you. How do you prioritize um, the work that you do, the paintings that are truly inspired by your travels, what have you, versus the custom pieces that you make for collectors where they must get you and like your work, but maybe their vision's different from yours? Um, I mean, we have to work on that together. You know what I mean? I mean, I, uh, there's always conversations to be had where somebody would be like, I want you to paint my cat in a Batman costume. And I'm like... <laughs> You know, I, I like that. Um, <laughs> that's a good starting point. Um, I, I think, you know, when, when, when I do accept a commission, it, it's a collaboration and we have to meet in the middle and they have to, you know, I'll tell somebody, I'm like, look, <laughs> you want me to do this painting, you know what my style is, you gotta trust me. You gotta trust me to do the job, you know? Uh, if somebody comes over to my house to, to fix my dishwasher, I ain't sitting in there trying to tell him how to fix the damn dishwasher. <laughs> I'm in awe when the person leaves and the dishwasher washes the dishes again, you know? Um, I, and, and I think, too, I mean, time management is such an important thing nowadays. And um, I go on the, there's eight hours to sleep, eight hours to work, eight hours for me schedule, so there's no bullshit about why anything can't be done. It just so happens that right now I'm, I'm going a lot into me time. But um, for me, painting brings me so much joy. Uh, it's, you know, it's... Um, I do what I, I do what I love. I do what I love. But it's it's a you know you have to have open conversations with people. Well, we love that you both are here. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Thank Ashley. you. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Ashley. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. I'm proud of you too. And I love you. I love you too. And I'm gonna leave now. And I'm gonna do something. No. <laughs>